We've been saying this whole time that hell is coming. Now, hell is here. It's something that's always present in a Diablo title, and we wanted to make sure that for Diablo 4, returning to hell was a special moment. We referenced the endgame cinematic with Prava and Inarius taking the fight to hell at the end of the game. We really wanted to capture that experience, that sensation of battling throngs of demons in hell. In the Infernal Hordes, they're gonna go into this mode, battle waves of demons, and be able to kind of change the shape of the game experience as you play it. Those of you who have joined us since base game and throughout the seasons will have noticed that we have this phenomenon in the world that's going on called Hell Tides. Some of you might have noticed that Hell Tides have been getting a lot worse lately. And now Hell is able to pierce the veil that's holding Hell back from fully invading Sanctuary and starting to take root in Sanctuary. And we started by asking ourselves some questions. What is the state of Sanctuary right before the Vessel of Hatred happens? How has Hell changed now that Mephisto isn't there anymore? What are the demons up to? Where is Mephisto? Does he have anything to do with this? Or is this just Hell rising of its own accord as the prophecy proclaimed? And so we thought to ourselves, how can we make things even worse for the people in Sanctuary? In this season, you'll very much get to dive into those mysteries with some unlikely allies and really get to the bottom of what's happening. So in this season, we play a lot with the notion of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. How far would you go to save Sanctuary, to save your world? What price would you pay? Would you sacrifice your soul for this? You're gonna meet a guy named Lochran, who at first seems sort of usual, but you're gonna quickly realize that something is off, that something is a little strange with this guy. So Lochran and Estelle are your allies, and they're going to help you return to hell. Both of them are experts in demons, and they're gonna use that knowledge to help you return to hell and become more powerful to be able to battle the Infernal Hordes. The Infernal Hordes is a new endgame activity in Diablo 4. It's primarily a wave-based activity. You're gonna be fighting wave after wave of demon forces in hell. So if any of you have ever played wave-based gameplay before, you'll know that things escalate. We've got meteor strikes and all sorts of things that try to keep you on your toes. One thing the Infernal Hordes does differently is the notion of Infernal Offers. And between each wave, you'll make a choice. You'll be granted an Infernal Offer, and by choosing one of three of these offers, you're gonna change the game mode in some way, a positive and a negative. You can imagine, from the depths of hell, these hands rise out and offer you both a boon and a bane, a kiss and a curse. And this is a temptation that the Fell Council is making to you. And in this temptation, you're offered more power, but that power comes at a cost. And so you get to choose you know, which temptations you're gonna pursue during your infernal run, and then customize your experience from there. One of the guiding principles of this game mode is replay. It's an in-game mode that we wanna make sure you're playing over and over again. So we really wanted to create a broad set of enemies for you to fight during this mode. We've got many demons to choose from in the lexicon of Diablo's monster families, but we're also gonna see some other foes you might not expect. There are gonna be certain types of enemies like Goatmen who have been banished to hell that have now rallied to Mephisto and fight by his side. And even some unlucky souls that marched on hell from the Cathedral of Light have now been revived in hell and fight against you alongside the demons. Basically everything that hell has to throw at you, we're throwing it at you this season. The Infernal Hordes has been built with multiplayer in mind, but multiplayer is not required. We wanna make sure that solo players still have a very fun experience in the Infernal Hordes. Now that said, if you roll in with a party, you're gonna have a lot of fun. This game mode is gonna appear in the Eternal and in the Seasonal Realm, and that means that once the season is over, it's here to stay. The Infernal Hordes is unlocked at World Tier 3, so really what you need to do to access it is earn your way up to World Tier 3 and then complete an Eternal quest line that takes you back to Hell and then unlocks the Infernal Hordes. For World Tier 1 and 2 players, we've built out a seasonal progression that'll help them become more powerful in order to be able to confront the Infernal Hordes. First is you can earn reputation, and that reputation applies to a reputation track that earns lots of really cool rewards that'll make you more powerful as you progress onto World Tier 3. The other thing we've built are micro dungeons called Hell Breaches that offer a glimpse at the Infernal Hordes mechanics. 
and they give you a chance to learn the mechanics before you confront the Infernal Hordes at World Tier 3. The final boss in this season is the Fell Council. And the Fell Council is some familiar faces that you might recognize from Diablo 2. These were priests of the Zacharoon, holy men who were corrupted and basically became vessels of hatred in their own right. The council members in Diablo 2 tried to help contain Mephisto in his soul stone. And of course, Mephisto being Mephisto, slowly but surely corrupted them. And eventually they had soul stones pierced into their hands and became super powerful. But eventually you overcame them and sent them to hell. Through the course of the story, resummon them. They've been reborn, slightly new powers, but the same animosity toward you. What's interesting about this boss encounter is there are five council members, but you're only going to fight three of them at once. This allows us to then create many different flavors of the boss fight for the Fell Council. In fact, it's about 10 variations in all. And so every time you go into that council fight, there's a very good chance you're gonna have a different fight than the last time you played it. We think it's going to offer a lot of replay for players. What we also introduce during these waves are opportunities for you to earn ether. Burning ether is the resource that you gather during the Infernal Hordes that you can then spend at the end of the activity. There's gonna be a fixed number of waves that you have to defeat, and once you've completed all those waves, then you'll face the Fell Council, defeat them, and collect your treasure. So upon defeating the Fell Council, the spoils of hell will spawn, and then you consume your burning ether and opening those chests. Now, the trick is, when you are playing through these waves, that's your opportunity to earn as much ether as you can. Different events are gonna spawn all throughout the waves, around the periphery of the arena, and it's your job to try and defeat as many of those events as possible to try and gather up all the ether you can. Really skilled players are going to be able to really maximize that ether so they get the biggest payout possible at the end after defeating the Fell Council. So with this burning ether, you'll be able to get new uniques, you'll be able to get new legendaries, you'll be able to get rare materials, things you might have scoured the whole of Sanctuary for in previous seasons or in the base game, but now we offer it to you here, down in the depths of hell. A lot of these new uniques and legendaries really build on top of this idea that they've been forged in hell. And so they're going to have unique looks that you can then make into cosmetics to apply wherever you like. They can also have unique VFX and sound effects to really create the sense that they were forged in hell. One particular one that I enjoy using a lot are boots. Boots, you say? Well, these boots uh, not only have been forged in hell, whenever you use a power with a cooldown, they shoot out a ring of fire that hits everyone around you. That's just one sample of the, the types of powers we're exploring. So death in the Infernal Hordes is uh, quite a big deal. You're returning to the realm of hatred where Mephisto was born. Like, this has to be a big deal. In the Infernal Hordes, it's, it's a lot like Nightmare Dungeons. You only get a fixed number of revives in order to be able to get to the end of your run. So at lower difficulties of the Infernal Hordes, you'll get a number of revives shared between your party, but at higher difficulty levels, the game is going to start taking away those revives, and that increases the stakes that you have. If you die too much, you'll be ejected from the mode. In the Infernal Hordes, we created a lot of new ways for monsters to ambush the players, and so I'm pretty stoked to see how our players respond to these. The seasonal quest line and the eternal quest line, they have lots of little surprises and twists and turns in them. And there's even some surprises we've buried deep within the Infernal Hordes that hopefully players will have a great time with.